guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is another Q&A video for you guys. The first one I did, which I will link below, got a lot of good feedback. And you know what? I kept getting DM after DM of different questions, so I thought, why not make another one? This video, though, is more for people who are maybe trying to pursue the career, who are trying to be flight attendants. These are more in-depth questions that have to do with my job, interviewing, how to get the job, what I pay for, what my company pays for, stuff like that. So if that is something that you're interested in, keep watching. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first question I wanna go over is, how do you prepare for a phone interview or a video interview? The way my airline does it is they do a phone interview but I have taken video interviews, so I've, I've done it before and I can kind of give you tips that helped me and that made the experience a little bit easier for me. So for video interviews, what I suggest is pinning your hair back. You don't have to put it up. Just pin it back off your face so they can get a clear view of your face. Also, it would help to get somebody to stand behind your phone or whatever it is you're using to record. That way, if you're not really used to talking to a camera or talking by yourself, you can have someone in the back. And also, um, having someone there, they could help you kind of gather your thoughts and figure out what you're going to say. You know, because it is kind of nerve-wracking. You're like, oh my god, I don't want to mess up. So you tend to make more mistakes when you're a little bit nervous. So having someone there will calm you down and it might help you out. Another thing for the video interview is um, you should be dressed like as if it is a face-to-face -face interview. Dress to the nines. Button-up shirt, jacket if you want a jacket, no jacket, doesn't matter, but you gotta look good. Um, they wanna know, they wanna see what you look like. They wanna know if you have a great personality, if you can talk to people, if you can answer the questions in a fun, or a good way or a way that's gonna draw people to you so you want to draw them to you so that's that's pretty much it for the video interview it's pretty simple but if you are kind of awkward videoing yourself once again I, I do suggest having someone there it makes the experience a whole lot better as far as phone interviews they can't see you so it doesn't really matter what you look like but what does matter is how you sound so what I found helped me for the phone interview is I kept a smile on my face while I was talking for some reason, I don't know what it is, but smiling while you're talking just changes your tone. It just sounds happier. It sounds more excited. Um, it just sounds better. I did also get some advice in my DMs from someone who is a manager at a different company. He said that he suggests that you stand up because standing up will also improve your tone and you will sound a lot better. Um, as far as the type of questions they're going to ask you in the video or phone interview, they're typical interview questions. So flight attendants can't have any tattoos visible in uniform and they wanna, they're going to ask you questions that have to do with leadership, self-management, you know, tell me a time when you had to step up, stuff like that. What I do suggest for this is that you go on Glassdoor and Indeed. Now, I do i am not saying that those questions on Glassdoor and Indeed are going to be exactly the same ones that the interviewers are going to ask you, but they are some good questions to read and write out your own answers to them and get yourself prepared because they're going to be similar. It's going to be similar questions and you want to prepare yourself as much as possible. Once again, I don't know about you guys, but when I did it, I was so nervous. And when I get nervous, I cannot talk. I start stumbling. I, you know, I can't form sentences. And I'm just like, I get stuck. So um, it really helped me to look up questions and like kind of write down my own answers and know, okay, this is what I'm going to say if they ask me about this. This is what I'm going to say if they ask me about this. It's good to prepare yourself. Um, you do want to prepare yourself because, I mean, it's a big deal. This job is a big deal, probably. If you're watching this, I mean, you're really serious about it. So, yeah, I suggest doing some research. Ask questions, you know. If you follow some flight attendants on social media, DM them. They might answer. I answer. I love answering. So, research. You know, get as much info as you can, as many questions that they could possibly ask you just so you can better prepare yourself. Okay, my second question is how to prepare for a face-to-face -face interview. So once again, like I said for the previous question, you can use Glassdoor, Indeed, and all those like career websites to help prepare you. 
Um, what I don't suggest though is that you memorize answers or give generic answers to those questions. You know, like, oh, what makes you qualify to be a flight attendant? I love people and I love to travel. I mean, that is like a joke between all flight attendants because it's just like, well, of course you do. You have to. It's part of the job. But find something else. Find a different answer to that question. Anyways, that, that was an example. But, um, you know, you want your responses to be genuine. And if you just memorize someone else's answer, it's not going to come across as genuine. And the interviewers are really going to notice that. Um, how you want to look when you go to a face-to-face -to -face is top notch. I mean, your nails should be done or clean. Your makeup should be done. Your hair should be done. You should look as perfect as possible. Iron everything. Your pants, your shirt, your undershirt. Don't leave anything half Okay, I mean, this is a huge deal. They're gonna look at everything. They're gonna look at your face, they're gonna look at your hair, they're gonna look at the way you dress. You wanna look your best. And also, um, what I do suggest is that you practice smiling from now. Let me tell you something, okay? Before I got this job, I used to think, you know, resting face was the coolest thing ever. This is not what you want to go for in the interview. They want someone who is gonna be friendly, approachable, has a smile on their face. So you know what I did? After the first no on my interview, I was so devastated. But they let me know, they told me that it's because you don't smile. You looked so upset during the whole interview. We thought you didn't want to be here. So you know what I did? I went home and I smiled for everything. I would be driving the car like smiling walking through any type of like public establishment smiling I like annoyed myself I would sit in front of a mirror and smile while I was doing makeup like until I got it plastered on my face so you know what after after that happened like I realized like I just feel so much better I'm not saying that the other way is bad or wrong you know some people they they rock the RBF but um, for this job, you gotta lose it. You got to lose it. That is not a flight attendant trait is to have an RBF. I mean, you know, sometimes we do have our days where we're just like, don't talk to me. But you want to get the smile down. You want to, you know, smile so much that your cheeks hurt. <laughs> you might think you look like a loser, but you really don't. You just look happier. Uh, what else? What else for a face-to-face? -face? What else? What else can I tell you? Um... So the face-to-face -face interview, it's going to be a group thing. So you're going to go and there's going to be like 30, 40, 50 p other people who are trying to get the job and, you know, they're going to be watching you. They're going to see how you interact with, you know, your interview buddies, whatever you want to call them. They're going to, they're going to watch. They're going to see if you're going to be nice to them, if you're going to talk to them. So don't be afraid. Get to know people. You know, these people could be your potential classmates and lifelong friends. So get to know them, ask them what their name is, where they're from. People come from all over the U.S. to do these interviews, so it doesn't hurt. And it also helps build friendships, like getting to know people right because they're going to be just as nervous as you are. So break the ice, make friends. What else? What else? Yeah, it's going to be a group thing. So you do the group thing. They're going to do some tests on you. They're going to make sure that you can sit in the jump seat and buckle the belt. That's important. That is safety. Uh, they're going to make sure that you can close the overhead bins. They also are going to give you like a little presentation about the company, tell you what the company's all about and stuff like that, give you all the benefits. And then they're going to take you for a one-on-one -on -one after all that's done. And they're going to ask you some more like interview questions. So prepare yourself for that. Um, don't be nervous. I know that's really, that's easier said than done because I was a nervous wreck, but you'll do fine. Just try to think that everybody there is in your place also. They're all really nervous, so um, getting to know people will really help with the nerves, you know? Like, like I said earlier, when you introduce yourself to people and you get to know them, it's really going to help. Like, you're going to feel comfortable. Like, okay, yes, they're, they're with me. They're on my team. So anything else for the face-to-face? -face? Look your best. Act your best. Uh, I think that is it for the face-to-face -face stuff. Yeah, that's it. Next question. What do I pay for? What does the company f pay for? Okay, so this I get asked this all the time. I don't know why I didn't do it in the last video, but... Here I am doing it right now. Okay, so every single airline is different. The way that my 
airline does it is so when I'm on reserve and they're not using me for a trip even though technically I'm getting paid for those days any hotels or any expenses are all you know my responsibility so I need to get my own hotels I need to get my own Ubers shuttles all that stuff so that's for reserve however when I am on an actual trip like let's say I'm on reserve and they assign me a three-day trip so those hotels that I stay in for that trip are paid for by the company food and meals and stuff like that they do give us a per diem which also I talked about in my last video it we do get a small per diem it is uh, a couple bucks so that is what they give us to cover meals and stuff like that while we're on the trip uniform so my company does give us an allowance every year so we can buy the the uniforms we don't have to pay out of pocket um, and every year we can update our uniforms so we can always have fresh and new pieces uh, they do give us that allowance every year so yeah my company does cover the cost of uniforms also airport parking uh, unfortunately they do not cover airport parking but it does vary from airport to airport um, in LAX I pay $75 a month but to me that's not that bad just because I commuted to Oakland and Vegas and I was spending anywhere from two to three hundred dollars on hotels and ubers and stuff like that so i'm definitely saving a lot of money now paying for airport parking and being based in um lax so yeah so it could get it could get pricey the stuff that we do have to pay for but you know it is what it is it's a little difficult in the beginning to kind of balance everything but you know as we do go on with the company and we start making a little more money it gets easier and easier so this leads me into the next question I did talk about it in the other video but I'm gonna talk about it again what do we get paid um, I started off at $23.70 per hour and the minimum for reserve was 72 so let me adjust here really quick because i can't do math in my head 72 is 1706 dollars so that's before tax and all that stuff so it's not much in the beginning but the way we have it is um, every year we do get a nice bump in our pay so it doesn't always stay like that it gets better and better our top out is well, when, when I was in training and they let us know pay and stuff like that is 63. Um, starting pay might have went up, by the way. I think it did go up. Uh, actually, I'm not sure, but that's what I started off at. So the top out after 13 years is $63 an hour. You're just going to go up from there. So it is going to be hard at first, but it gets better and better. Did I get paid for training? So technically, I didn't get paid while at training, but... I got money as a bonus for completing training. So after we finished training, they gave us a bonus and then we started right away into our advance and our pay. I guess I should explain what an advance is. So flight attendants get paid once a month, but we do have an option of getting an advance at the beginning of the month. So it kind of is like um, getting paid bi-weekly but not really so what they do is they'll give us an advance like let's say for a thousand dollars and for the whole month we ma I made three thousand dollars so they'll give me the one thousand dollar advance and then I complete the month and then they give me a the rest of my money which would be two thousand dollars I don't know if that makes sense but the, yeah that's how it works um, so did I get paid for training? No, but I did get a bonus. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. If you guys don't understand something, feel free to comment. <laughs> I know I'm a hot mess. I'm like jumping from topic to topic, but it's just a lot of information. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it like in order for you guys so you guys can understand it. But um, yeah, so if you don't understand, just leave me a comment and I'll explain it to my best ability or DM me or whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, next question. Do I fly a fixed route? So, no, I do not. It is different. I could get the same trip. I could get one trip this week and then next week I could get the same exact trip. 
but it's not common and it doesn't usually happen that way. We don't have a fixed route. We do different things every day and it's not, not a fixed route for, for us. The next question is how do I apply? So basically every airline has a different way that they hire flight attendants. So the best way to apply is to check this website which I mentioned previously and they will let you know which airlines have an open link and the way you're gonna apply so you need to get 10 years worth of your job history ready for this because they do ask for that if you don't have 10 years worth of job history then you would just put in whatever job you worked from the day you turned 18 to the day that you applied. Uh, they also are going to ask you for references, so get your references ready and get your work experience ready. Other than that, it's just a basic application, so there's not really much to explain, but you do have to stay on top of the airline websites and just make sure whether their link to apply is open or not because you can't just go into the website at any given moment and fill out an application. Do all airlines have the same benefits? This is the last question. No, not all airlines have the same benefits. Not all airlines have the same pay, the same schedule set up. It's best to ask questions and talk to different flight attendants from different airlines and see what their benefits are like and you know which one you like the most and which one you agree with the most and apply to that one but yeah not all airlines are the same so yeah the not all airlines have the same kind of benefits so you're gonna want to ask around and see what everybody has in store so I do know that there are some airlines that don't pay for training there are some airlines that don't give you any money at all for training and there are some airlines that do pay you for training so yeah you're gonna want to ask and see and prepare yourself and health benefits are gonna be different from airline to airline basic work benefits are gonna be different your schedules will vary and they will be different the way you sit reserve is gonna be different so yeah so you're gonna want to do some homework and figure out which you like the most and apply to that airline or if you are okay with any of it then apply to them all one thing i do want to say though is that i do like repeating this just because i know that it could be hard when you get a no the first time that i got a no when i went to an interview I was devastated. I sat in my car crying for like a good 10 minutes. You know, I felt like, you know, what was it about me that they didn't like? I felt like I wasn't good enough. Like, oh my God, I'm never gonna apply again. Like that was so horrible. You know, it's nothing personal. And I hope that if you did get a no at some point that it didn't, didn't discourage you and that you continue trying. It might take you multiple tries, but if it's something that you, you know, really want to do, then, you know, don't, don't take the no personally, basically. Don't take, it's nothing against you. Yeah, getting, you know, getting a no sucks, but there are a lot of people that apply in all at once, so it's hard to choose. So don't be discouraged. Just don't be sad. I was so sad. It sucks. It sucks when someone tells you, no, we don't want you. You're like, why? It sucks. And you worked so hard and you stayed up all night and you read Glassdoor and you read Indeed and you read forums and you read blogs and you asked a million questions and they still tell you no and you're like, oh, I got so prepared for this. Why would you say no? But it's okay. Okay, it, it happens it's it might happen it might not if it doesn't good for you if it does keep trying yeah I just wanted to say that just because like I'm a flight attendant it's happened to me so don't be discouraged it could happen to you and then the next application you get the job so I just wanted to say that 
at the end of this video and and yeah and that's all I got for you I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I gave you some good info for when you apply and when you have your interview if you do have upcoming phone interviews video interviews face-to-face -face interviews good luck I wish you all the best let me know if you got it I love hearing when you guys are like oh hey by the way I passed the phone interview I'm going on to a face-to-face -face. like that's great I love hearing that so let me know yeah and if you guys have anything else that you want to know let me know in the comment section or DM me whatever it is I will try and get back to you as quickly as possible and give you as best of an advice that I could give you and I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe yeah that's it thank you guys and I will see you next time bye